What's up everybody, Tony here with High Tech Check and today we're going to be taking a look at the Oops Portable Power Station. Now I will let you know that Oops did send this out to me so I could do this review for you guys today but all my opinions are my own and I'm going to show you exactly what it can and cannot do. I also will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to pick it up yourself and if you guys like me and you want to support my channel please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews to you guys. Now if you've ever been in a power outage situation, maybe there was a really bad storm or something like that, this is definitely a good investment to have, especially if you have people that depend on things that use power and need to use it continuously all the time. Unlike gas generators, they might last longer, but you can only use them outdoors. Unlike this, where you can use this indoors, there's no fumes and it's nearly silent. Now you can use this with a lot of different things in your home and if you want to know if you can use it with this portable power station, just look at the wattage rating. This can handle up to 600 watts continuously and it also has a 1000 watt peak usage. So if you have certain things that are exactly 600 watts, they may peak when you start them up but then go down to 600 watts again and this will be able to handle that. Another really nice thing is that it has multiple ways to charge it up. You can use a USB Type-C port on here. You can use the included uh, AC power adapter that comes with it. It also comes with a car charger with the cigarette lighter that you can use to charge it as well. You can also use a solar panel uh, for totally outdoor, off-the-grid usage, especially if you're camping or things like that. And speaking of camping, there's a lot of little things you might bring uh, that only work off batteries maybe like lights and things like that but there's a lot of other things around your home that you might want to bring that don't run off batteries and that's where this is perfect for that it's pretty small compact and it only weighs about 15.6 pounds and it opens up your world to a lot more things that you can bring with you camping if you want to so I will be showing you how it works with everything how it charges up and how some use case scenarios uh, that you might want to use this for but first let's go ahead and take a look around the power station itself uh, like i said before it's about 15.6 uh, pounds it's not super heavy but it's not super light either it is made of all plastic it has this rubber uh, coating around the edges here and it also has some rubber feet on the bottom which is really nice and then here we have our power button if we just hold that in for a few seconds the unit will turn on as you can see, it has a really nice LED display here. Pretty much displays everything you need. It shows the battery life. It shows how much time you have left when you have certain things plugged in. It shows fall protection. Now you can also turn these ports on and off as you need them so you don't have to have them all on at the same time. And if we just push the little power button here, as you can see, it'll turn on these AC ports and it does the same thing for your USBs and the cigarette lighter. We also have some 5521 uh, output ports here. Those are 12 volt. And you can also use the three prong uh, power cables as well. There's a nice little slot uh, in the middle for that third prong. So you can pretty much use any of those plugs in here, which is really nice. So if we look on the back here, or I'm sorry, on the side, here is the power adapter for maybe like a solar panel or that power adapter or the cigarette lighter that came for your car. And if we look at the back here, we have our little LED light that does get uh, pretty bright. You just press it once for the, the lowest setting, push it again for the brightest, and then it has your little uh, SOS signaling on the back there, which is pretty nice. So if you don't know uh, how to do SOS with the light, it'll do it for yourself. Now if we look at the USB ports here, we do have a USB Type-C, which does do power delivery uh, output, and you can also charge uh, input like I said before and then we have two USB 3.0's which is quick charge 3.0 compatible uh, for those cell phones that do take advantage of that. Now like I said before it is pretty much almost quiet it does have a little fan inside that does run and I will let you listen to that but if you're unless you're right up on it you're really not going to hear that fan running at all. Okay, so let's go over some of the specs real quick. So now as far as the AC output goes, its rated voltage is 100 to 120 volts AC. The rated power is 600 watts. Peak power, 1000 watts. The frequency is 60 hertz. The DC 12 volt output at rated voltage is again 12 volts. The rated current is 10 amps. The USB output for the USB 3.0 ports is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2 amps, and 12 volts at 1.5 amps, 18 watts max. 
The output for the USB Type-C is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, 12 volts at 3 amps, 15 volts at 3 amps, and 20 volts at 3 amps. Now as far as the input voltage goes, it can handle up to 12 volts all the way up to 30 volts. The 7909 input adapter can do 100 watts max, which is the wall outlet, and the USB-C input power can do up to 60 watts max. The rated battery capacity is 595 watt hours, rated voltage 19.2 volts DC, and the battery cell type is lithium iron phosphate, which is definitely safer than the regular LiPo batteries. It's IP21 waterproof rated. It's working temperature is zero to 40 degrees Celsius. And again, it weighs about 15.6 pounds. And if you want to turn off the LCD, you just hit the power button, it turns off, turn it back on, just hit it again. Okay, so real quick, I just want to show you guys what it looked like when you were charging something on the LCD screen here. I'm gonna use my iPhone 12 Pro Max using the USB Type-C cable. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And as you can see, it turns on the LCD screen. And then I'll go ahead and plug in my uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. And as you can see, immediately it starts to charge. And then on, this, on the LCD screen here, it shows you how much wattage it's using and then how much time we have left on the battery and our, our battery percentage. So as you can see, it's slowly creeping up as far as the wattage goes there. So we're at about 13 watts uh, output. And as you can see, we have about 40 hours left of usage on the battery. So that'll give you some idea of what the little things on the LCD screen mean and what it looks like when you're actually using it. So here's another real world scenario for you. It's freezing outside and your power is out. You have a portable heater and you also have the Oops portable power station. The thing is, you're gonna have to find a heater that's 600 watts or less to work with this. This particular one here is 1500 watts and I just wanna show you what happens when you have something that uses more wattage than the power station can handle when you turn it on. So we'll go ahead and turn on the AC here and then we'll go ahead and turn on the heater. As you can see, nothing happens. I just heard a click, and then you get the error at the bottom there with the little red triangle. So if you're worried about things uh, being plugged into this that are too much for it, you don't have to worry. It has built-in safeties for that, and it just go it trips, and then you get the error, so you know that it's it's just too much for the power station to handle. Okay, so like I said before, here are some use case scenarios where you might want to use the portable power station. One of them being is if you work outside a lot or if you work in construction or something like that, having power to do your job is definitely needed. And sometimes you don't wanna run like a 100 foot cable or something like that. And here we have the portable power station where you can pretty much take anywhere. And again, you don't have to run those 100 foot cable. So here we have the power station. We have a, a whole slew of different things that we can connect up to it. Like I said before, we have those three prong cables that aren't a problem for this power station because it has the little hole in the middle here. All you need to do is simply put the third prong inside the little hole and you can use it uh, just like normal. It's off right now. We'll turn it on and then we'll hit the power button here. And as you can see, the little it shows a little AC connection there. We don't have anything plugged in right now, so we will plug something in. Uh, here we have a little light. Maybe you want to use it for you know some lighting if you're working in the dark or something like that. And we can use a power strip to add more things, but again, you need to be in, uh, keep in mind how much wattage you're using for each thing you're plugging in. So this little LED light here, We'll go ahead and plug in. And as you can see, it's already on and we're seeing how many watts it's actually pulling, which is gonna be about 13 watts, which will give us a total of 23 hours of total usage. So let's go ahead and plug in some other things here. Here we have a, a 12 volt uh, battery charger for my DeWalt here. So we just plug that right into the power supply here. We'll see how many watts it's pulling. So it is charging the batteries. You can see the little uh, red light is on right now. So now we're up to a total of 40 watts and that gives us about 11 hours of usage uh, for the power station. So another thing is, 
<laughs> if you like to use Dremels for maybe hobbies or anything like that, you can also use this. This is also, I can tell you, uh, from using this inside my little uh, basement area where I do all my work, the, the power cord and plug into the wall can be a little constraining. So if you could easily plug this in and move this wherever you need, it'd be a lot easier to do some work. So we'll go ahead and plug this into the surge protector here. And I'll go ahead and turn this on just a little bit, turn on the LED. We'll see how much wattage we pull. So we're doing about 65 watts. So now we have 8.2 hours left. And if we turn it up, we should see the wattage increase. And there you go. So again, you can have a multitude of things plugged in here. You just have to be mindful of how much wattage you're using and you can add a, a power strip, surge protector, whatever you want easily to add more plugs other than just the two that are available. Okay, so another interesting thing I wanted to show you was charging it uh, from the cigarette lighter in your car. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind is when you're charging it from your cigarette lighter in your car, make sure that you have your car turned on because if you don't, it'll drain your car's battery and then you're not gonna be able to start it. So just charge it while you're driving somewhere maybe, or if, you know, in a pinch, uh, you need to turn on your car to charge it, then you can, again, it's gonna use gas. But anyway, the interesting thing is, and this goes for AC charging or pretty much any charging, I wanted to show you that I do have it connected to the uh, cigarette lighter plug here. I'm gonna turn on my car. Okay, so here as you can see, it is charging from the cigarette lighter. The input is ramping up. We're getting about 71 watts of input. Now, um, I wanna show you that I can charge my cell phone. So here I have my iPhone. I'm gonna turn on the USB and it starts to charge, right? Well, you don't see uh, any time at the bottom here or anything else because the amount of wattage the cell phone is using to charge is less than what's coming in. But if I take my power sander here and I turned it on, as you can see, the wattage that this was using exceeded what was going into the battery and therefore it was using the battery showing you how much time you had left. So you can use the pass-through power as long as what you're using is using up less wattage than it's getting in. If it goes over, it's gonna start to use the battery again. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I will admit this is a little extreme, but I wanna see what this little power station can do. So here I have my 55 inch 4K uh, LED TV and I have my PS4 all connected to the little power station here and I also have my other camera uh, aiming right at the LCD so we can actually see what kind of wattage it's using and power consumption. You might not ever use this but it's just cool to see what it can do so let's go ahead and turn everything on. Okay so now I'm going to turn on the TV in three, two, one, go. Okay so you can see the wattage is starting to ramp up. So it looks like the TV's using about a 38 watts and we have 11 hours of usage. I just need to turn up the screen brightness so we can see. Okay, so now the interesting thing is that now that I've turned up the screen brightness, you can see that it's now using 179 watts and we have three hours of usage. So let's go ahead and turn on the PS4. So the PS4 is ramping up now. So the blinking you're seeing on the screen for the power station, that's not what you actually see. That's just because of the frame rate of the camera. You absolutely see no blinking whatsoever on the LCD in real life. Okay, so here it looks like at idle, with the TV, it's pulling about 250 watts, and we have two hours and one minute um, until the battery dies. So let's go ahead and play a game. 
So as you can see, just starting up the game pulls just a little bit more wattage, but we'll see once we start to play the game what happens. Now if we look on the screen here, you can see this little icon here of the little fan moving. That's because the fan is on the power station just to keep it cool. That's what that means. So as you can see, it's now up to 302 watts. I've turned up the volume here. So as you can see, we're, we're playing the game now and it's, it's pulling about 313 watts. Now if the fans on the PS4 start to blow faster, I'm sure it's gonna pull a lot more wattage. But when you're just starting out, it's, it's gonna be about 315 with, the, with this TV. So again, with a 55 inch LED 4K TV and a PS4, you're probably looking at about around 315 watts of uh, power usage. And then you get about, you know, maybe two hours of total usage working on this. So if you have a smaller TV and maybe a better system that doesn't use as much wattage as maybe like a, a retro console or something, you can get a lot more usage out of it. Uh, but again, this is just something cool to test out. So another thing I was curious about is if we're charging up the unit using the AC power adapter, can power pass through and still charge while we're charging up? So here I have my iPhone connected to the uh, power station with this little power adapter here. So we'll go ahead and turn on the AC and we'll see if it charges. And as you can see, it does still charge without using any output from the power station. And also just to show you, you can use the other ports as well for charging like the USB ports. And if you're wondering about the fan noise, this is what it sounds like standing right next to the unit. Okay, so it's probably about eight o'clock at night right now and it's almost pitch black. And I just wanted to show you guys how bright the LED that's built into this power station actually is. So here is the power station itself. As you can see, and we'll turn it on to the lowest setting. As you can see how it lights up my backyard here. And then we'll put it on to the highest setting. It is actually quite bright. <laughs> now I also have a 60 watt LED connected to the power station just to show you guys if you were in maybe like a camping situation or something like that and you wanted to light up a lot of room, you'd be able to do it very easily. This LED is also 6,500 lumens. So we'll go ahead and turn it on right now. <laughs> so there, <laughs> it's pretty much just like a uh, light out. As you can see, it's pulling about 63 watts. And we do have our battery at, at, at 89% and we have about seven hours of usage left. And here I'll show you the LED. It's super bright. But like I said, if you were in a situation where you're camping and you, or you were just out of power and you needed a lot of light, you'd be able to do it very easily and still have a lot of time to do it in. Okay, so now I've switched to a single LED bulb that's only 1600 lumens and uses about 13 watts. And we'll see how long that lasts. Okay. There you go, it's pulling about 11 watts. Now we have 22 hours of usage um, on 89% battery. And as you can see, it still lights up a lot of area just with the single bulb. Okay, so here's another little scenario that I've put together myself. I have my LED projector here. I also have my retro gaming system. Everything is all connected into the projector itself. The retro console uses USB to be powered and then the HDMI that goes right into the back and the projector as you can see is connected right up to the OOPS power station here. Currently it's pulling 140 watts and we have 2.8 hours worth of usage off of the 85%. And as you can see there is the probably 300 inch picture 
which is pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and turn on the Super Nintendo. And this is just something cool you can do with your kids or like I said, if you're out camping or something and you just want a little entertainment. When's the last time you played Mario Kart on a 300 inch screen? <laughs> so you get the idea. As you can see right here, I did have a portable screen put up, but it was just too small and I figured it would be really cool to just make it go as big as I could. So really, if you're out in the you know, wilderness or out in your backyard, all you need is a portable screen, this setup, and you have a portable gaming system. So how well did this power station perform? It actually performed pretty good. I really don't have any complaints about it. And after all that I showed you, I went back and I hooked it up to my 65 inch LED TV and it lasted an additional two and a half to three hours even after I did all that testing. So it actually depends on, you know, how efficient your TV is that'll make this last a lot longer because the 65 inch actually used less power than that 55 inch that I showed you on the video. So I even ran it all the way down to 0% and when it couldn't hold up anymore, it gave the low battery error, which was good to know because you can run this all the way from 100 all the way down to uh, 0%. And then I went ahead and charged it up to 100% today. I wanted to see how fast you could actually charge this. And it took about four and a half hours to go com from completely dead all the way up to 100%. And that was using the USB-C port with a 65 watt adapter plus the wall adapter that comes with it. So I was charging with dual ways. Uh, and that gave me about 150 watt uh, input. And again, like I said, it took about four and a half hours to totally charge up. So again, if you guys are interested in picking this up, I will be putting a link in the description. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.